Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the awesome chat. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters for the awesomecast.net. And uh, this is our uh, our chat show, our interview show, our Charlie Rose show. Oh, yeah, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't load myself in there, not yet. Uh, where we're talking about people doing awesome things, uh, mostly in Pittsburgh, sometimes outside of Pittsburgh. Cool tech, cool cool startups, cool people doing cool things and awesome things. I'm using the wrong word here. Um, around around the area and in, in the field. Uh, so you can check out this and a lot of other interviews. We have so many that we did in uh, uh, 2015. We kind of soft launched those. So we got some interviews where we could last year. We talked to you, Jag Off. We talked to um, a, a bunch of people uh, that had some great, great startups and had some cool stuff going on. Uh, check all that out at awesomecast.net. Follow us on the Twitter at awesomecast and look for awesomecast on the Facebook and especially the Facebook group where we're having a lot of conversation about the stories about Pittsburgh and tech in general, of course. Uh, you can join us on those. And let's know, is there anybody that we're missing out on that we should have on the show? We're taking suggestions. We're going to see how it works out. It's more than just the people I run into at Open Coffee Club, for instance. Uh, so with me, uh, what else people I run into at some of these events around town uh, and uh, between the pod camps and the Refresh Pittsburghs or you know, wherever the heck we run into it. I think we did social media days the last time I saw you in the wild, right? <laughs> <laughs> something yeah, like that I feel like i just i show up at a lot of things and they kind of all blur together sometimes yeah a uh, kim lyons uh currently the news editor over at next pittsburgh.com uh fantastic site that i've been subscribing to in my email uh yeah old school style um uh, for a good long time some great articles i'm excited to hear that you uh were moving over there from the post gazette and uh it seems like we we seem to match the beat a little bit um because i just I, I don't even look at the byline and I, I end up tweeting your articles out <laughs> because we're both kind of looking at startups in the area. Yeah, that's a good thing. No, I think uh, that's a big passion of mine is startups in Pittsburgh because I think it's one of those sort of niche areas that you don't have to know too much about business to cover really well. You just have to know about, you know, how people come up with their ideas, what they're passionate about, you know, because once you get someone started talking about their idea about their startup, there's no stopping them. I mean, it's 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 a pretty easy conversation to have, and it's kind of hard not to get you know caught up in that excitement and in that in that passion that people have. So I love to write about startups, and I think the nice thing about Pittsburgh, especially, is you know you don't. I think a lot of people think startup they automatically think a tech company, and that's not necessarily true. You know, today I wrote an article about a hot dog shop opening up in Beachview. You know, and they're just as much a startup as, you know, any other, um, you know, any other tech company or any other gadget or device that there's such a diversity of startups in Pittsburgh um, that it it's really it keeps me busy. And I just I learn so much from from these people and from what they're doing. So it's really a great time to be kind of in that space in Pittsburgh, I think. It does seem like uh, the tech startups are kind of the romanticized thing right now. We've got our Silicon Valleys. we got uh, 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 Shark Tank and. And things like that, kind of, you know, kind of building that up. Um, and I know one one thing when, you know, talking about, you know, Awesome Cast and some of the stuff we do around here, I, I want to kind of show the excitement here, right? And I think you guys are, that was, honestly, a lot of stuff that I'm trying to figure out what's exciting in town, I'm finding from the site. Uh, so um, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about nextpittsburgh.com, kind of, you know, what's kind of the goal of it? Why uh, why does this pop up and, 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 and seem to appeal, you know, like guys like me uh, and people kind of in this space? Um, uh, what's, what's kind of the, the motivation, uh, around the site in general? Yeah. So the publisher, she started, it's been about two years, Tracy Serter. She was a publisher of pop city, uh, before that. And she started this because she wanted to highlight the cool things, uh, happening in Pittsburgh and cool people doing, them. you know, so moving Pittsburgh to the next level is kind of the theme. So there's no shortage of that. And I think it, it takes a little bit more ingenuity. I think it takes a little bit more connection with the community than the writing, news stories off of a press release. We're not going to cover every single event or every single instance of something going on in Pittsburgh, like news-wise, that, you know, the Post-Gazette or the Tribune Review would do, because really that's their forte and, you know, why would you venture into that? But we try to find the stories that maybe they're not getting or they wouldn't necessarily get to, um, you know, tech-oriented stories, business stories, uh, city design is one area. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on with development, um, and I think a lot of people don't appreciate how much great architecture we have in town. That's a big area that I really love to 
look at what we're doing with some of these old buildings we have and how they're being repurposed into sort of really new and interesting ways. The Ace Hotel over in East Liberty is a really good example, you know, of this older building that had really been sort of not abandoned, but definitely neglected. And what they've done in there, what they're still working on in there is really amazing, just what they've done and and sort of keeping some of the original architecture, but, you know, making it a really unique place. And that those are the stories that I really love are finding these things that, um, you know, you wouldn't find in any other city that, you know, you're not going to find in, in San Francisco, you're not going to find in New York, that they're uniquely Pittsburgh. And there's so, so many of them. It does take a little more work. It does take a little more, you know, kind of schmoozing and going to events and showing up at things. You can't really write off a press release because, you know, you're going to, the story gets lost in all the other people covering the same thing. So I do kind of like the um, entrepreneurial, you know, aspect of it that you're, it's up to you to kind of, or up to me to kind of find stories that are going to resonate with our readers. And sometimes they hit and sometimes they don't. But I think for the most part, we have a good sense of who our readers are. Tracy's really cognizant of, you know, who they are, what they like, what they click on Facebook, what they don't. So, you know, we use a lot of that met those metrics to kind of drive what stories we think will resonate with our audience and what they're going to want to know about what they're going to hear about. It sounds like there's a there's a good bit of uh, exciting risk when it, it comes to uh, your 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 kind of story finding, and also like it feels like you're finding the diamonds in the rough uh, amongst Pittsburgh. You know, kind yeah. of kind of the, the the things on the I don't want to say the back streets in the in the dark corners, obviously not that. Yeah. But um, I mean, well, for instance, you, you talk about Feeny's Weenies up here. Um, um, you know, is 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 a place that you know the conversation about Beachview is you know yeah, a thousand people come through, but nobody stops by. You know, and there's all this stuff right. that people are are missing, or and literally just literally passing by, or maybe not knowing right. that this is a neighborhood up here, squeezed between yeah. a couple major major roads. Um, yeah, and, and that's coming around. Uh, you know, that, that's a, that's really really cool to see. Yeah, and I mean, I think I I stumbled, not quite literally, but I stumbled on Phoenix when it's just going by on the train, you know, because I, I take mm-hmm. the red line to downtown. And so I there they, I there's this new sign, and I said, well, first of all, it rhymes, and, and so right off the <laughs> bat, I, I like that. So, and I just, I called them and I said, hey, have any, has anyone done a story about you guys? And they said, well, no. So I went in there and I talked to them and, you know, got them started talking, and customers were coming in, and it was just this great little you know, community restaurant. And it's sort of in a place where if you didn't know it was there, you know, you might not be aware of it. So I think if we can amplify those businesses that are, you know, doing things, taking a risk in a neighborhood like Beachview that had some troubles, that had some problems with, you know, development being kind of, kind of stunted a bit, um, you know, it's having a little bit of a turnaround. I think there's so many people really working hard to, to push it forward that, you know, if we can highlight those people and amplify what they're doing, to me, that's that's really rewarding. Because you know, there is a lot going on in other parts of the city, right? Lawrenceville is really hot. East Liberty is mm-hmm. really hot. And obviously, you know, you got to write about those those areas, too. But I'm always kind of interested in the ones that, you know, the Post Gazette probably wouldn't do a story about Feeny's Weenies necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, they might. Um, but it might be one of those those places that gets overlooked just because it's small, because it's, it's not, you know, it's not a sexy tech company. It's not... Uh, you know, it's not a huge hotel. It's not this grand development or anything. It's just a neighborhood um, business. So, you know, finding those stories that are maybe a little smaller in terms of what the Post Gazette or the TV stations will cover, um, those are the kind of stories I love to do. I'm just kind of poking around here as, you're, as we're talking, and I, I love some of these article titles, like Eight Great Hole in the Wall uh, Pittsburgh Breakfast Spots. <laughs> that um, story was a huge hit. And I mean, our. Um, the writer on that, Brian Comey, he's really, he's a talented writer. He's really, really smart guy. He ate so much breakfast to do that. <laughs> oh, so what, a, what a problem. But, what a problem to have. Yeah, I know. It's terrible <laughs> for him. But that was a huge hit because it was mentioned some of the, you know, the stalwarts, so the, the ones that are, are, you know, like Ritters and, you know, the places everybody knows. The Pamela's is another. So mm-hmm. but what we were trying to do is find the ones that people didn't maybe know or that, or maybe a little outside your neighborhood. Go to a different neighborhood. Check out a different a different uh, breakfast spot or a different restaurant that you hadn't heard of before. We get so much great feedback. That was a really strong performing article, and mm-hmm. he did a really nice job. I mean, it's breakfast, so right out of the out of the gate, you're going to win some people over with that. But those are the kind of stories I think that we really do well at. You know, I I just uh, did a a, a recent uh, one of my other podcasts about the the never eat alone concept. More about like kind of networking and having meetings and, and getting outside your shell and. And, and, yeah. and things uh but but i love doing it like I, I met up with a friend and we went to noodlehead today 
uh, over there. I guess that's is that Technic East Liberty. I guess maybe over there. Yeah. Uh, you know, and yeah. go, you know, discovering places like that because I I don't go to East Liberty. I don't go to Shady Side. I don't go to these other neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. I like my nice right. little cocoon of the South Hills. Um, yeah. But but I do like something forcing me out of of something like this and i and i love um um you know i'm a big advocate of especially something small um it, you're afraid to go to that small coffee shop uh, uh starbucks is that comfortable place you know you know what yeah, you're getting yeah um and i think i think you know the more you guys show off um uh, restaurants like this and uh, uh spaces and, and and things around the more people are going to be apt to kind of reach out to that yeah yeah, and that's sort of the goal, right, is that you help kind of um, highlight the insight of these people and also help drive business to them, help drive customers. You know, I think um, the other thing is people that are taking risks, people that are doing things that, you know, might be a little bit outside the box or might be a little bit uh, unconventional. But, you know, I went to – I try to go to as many startup-related events as I can. I can't get to all of them because there's so many. But, you know, mm -hmm. I went to a startup weekend up in Allentown and – all the things that are, that, that are going on up there, that Josh Lucas is just such a huge driving force. And I mean, I don't think the guy ever is low energy. Every time you see him, he's just so go, go. He's so pro Allentown and really, you know, and then a uh, neighborhood like Braddock, you know, where, where John Fetterman, you know, I know a lot of people he politically don't like him, will love him or hate him. The guy is, could not be a better ambassador for his, for his town. Right. I went over there for a uh, renovation they did uh, last, late last year. Um, looking at um, uh, one of the buildings that they sort of gutted basically and turned into a you know, beautiful mixed use space. So I love looking at those neighborhoods that, that they have so much potential and so much, you just sort of need a few things to click and they're going to really take off and really maybe be the next Lawrence for the next East Liberty. But, you know, talking to the people that are really behind those stories, it, it gets you kind of rooting for them, right? How do you not root for Braddock? How do you not root for mm -hmm. Allentown? You know, that, these communities that have had a tough road to hoe, but now they're, you know, they've got people who really care. Black Forge Coffee up in Allentown is such a great little community, you know, center, you know, a Studebaker Metals over in Braddock. I just love their stuff and what they're doing over there. So there's just, just so much good energy in these, these little small towns and people who really care about moving them forward. How do you not get caught up in that? You know, it's hard to, uh, to not um, get on board, you know, with kind of the enthusiasm, I think. It's awesome. That's awesome. Like I said, yeah. it, it's definitely a highlight for me. And it's a plan. Other other local uh, uh, publication that I used to get in my mailbox in my in my Google readers and back when Google Reader was a thing. Uh, so yeah, that's really displaced me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of people. So um, well, let's let's go uh, around to. So I mean, you know, it's really awesome. Um, um, kind of the push in the the the, the, the Pittsburgh startup side. Uh, I want to touch about on that a little bit more. Um, it, it seems like uh, we have a lot going on. You say you, it's hard to keep up with all the, all the meetups and the yeah. and the meetings and the coffee clubs and the and the startup Absolutely. weekends. And uh, you know, I, what do you think is the is the kind of charge that that's uh, bringing all this around uh, these days? Well, I think a lot of people credit Google for kind of putting this quote unquote on the map. But mm -hmm. I honestly think there was a lot going on before they came to town. There was a lot of energy. I mean, PodCamp was around before that. You know, places like Innovation Works and Alpha Lab were already in that space, firmly in that space, you know, before Google ever came to town. I mean, I look at people like Mike Wojcik, who's such a champion of startups and small business, and, you know, everything Innovation Works is doing. Jim Jen, um, you know, Thrill Mill has been such a great partner to small businesses. I think these entrepreneurially oriented people have been here. You know, they, it, this is not a new thing to them. Um, I think Google gives you some cred having you know, such a huge Google presence here obviously gives you tech cred, but I think it's the sort of Pittsburgh um, roll up your sleeves and get stuff done attitude that has always existed here. You know, even when there, was, there were steel mills and, and coal mines were the predominant industry, that I don't think that attitude or that, that mindset ever went away. I think it just kind of transferred to a different, you know, generation and a different sort of kind of industry. But I think Pittsburghers are nothing if not hard workers and, and determined hard workers. And I think it was just a matter of time before we figured out a way to transition from, you know, steel mills, coal mines, heavy manufacturing into this space that we're transitioning into now where we're really becoming a, a presence for tech companies and for innovation and, and, and new ideas. And I think Carnegie Mellon University, you know, as much as they are kind of a behemoth and they're so, so massive, they drive an awful lot of innovation and ideas and 
and growth and you know, University of Pittsburgh as well. All these, you know, these entities have been here and they, I think what's happening now is, is no surprise to them, you know, that they know that this is, this is what Pittsburgh is all about and has been for a while. But I think it just sort of goes back to the, the general personality of Pittsburgh. It's hardworking people who really want to do a good job and really want to, you know, really care about what they're doing, care about their work, you know. So I don't think that's – it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone if you've spent any time with anyone from Pittsburgh that, um, you know, that this would sort of come about and this this industry would really be up and running. Mm-hmm. It, it seems like we've always had – um, I, I know I, you know, I listen to a lot of tech news shows and, and podcasts, um, and, and, and Carnegie Mellon, you know, you always get a little bit, I'm like, Oh, we're talking about Pittsburgh, you know, uh, yeah. usually around robotics or something like that. But then mm-hmm. even, um, it's really uh, great to, you know, run in some of these kids, you know, it, it, it's not, you know, a- anybody, you know, anybody I know in my family that went to Carnegie Mellon became an engineer and went somewhere else, you know, and it seems yeah. like there's just that a lot of opportunity that they don't need to now because they can build something yeah. right here. Um, right. With, right. With your alpha labs yeah. and, and, and yeah. work cars and everything. Agree. Mm-hmm. And I think like them or not, I mean, like it's politics. And I think you have to give a nod to Bill Peduto as well for, you know, being the kind of mayor that maybe not everything he does is perfect. Not everything he does works exactly right. But I think having that sort of leader who, you know, we'll go on a podcast and talk to, he went on the drinking, um, Drink, yeah. a, a drinking friends podcast, you know, and, and he, you know, to go on a podcast and just talk to two guys, um, you know, about what's going on in the city, he'll go on, you know, he'll, he'll meet with anybody. He'll talk to anybody about who wants to move mm-hmm. the city forward. I mean, I think the guy just worked so hard to get Pittsburgh, you know, get at the credit it deserves. And I think, you know, again, I know not everyone's a huge fan, everyone, not everyone loves the guy, but I think you got to give him at least partial credit for, you know, all the, all the ways he pushes Pittsburgh and makes it, you know, a part of the conversation nationally, for mm-hmm. sure. Family wants a sample that as the drinking partners podcast, but actually was featured over on next And, yeah. uh, he also, uh, he also stopped by for a few minutes with us. Uh, I, was, I was, I was giving a hand to our good friend, Yajagoff, Jagoff, John Chamberlain, yeah. uh, yeah. one of their inaugural podcasts had the, you know, a uh, light up night. He stopped by, we talked a, a yeah. little bit, um, so, uh, that was really awesome. And, and I love that access, you know, yeah. um, um, and I think he's, and I, I think you'll see more of this as, uh, if president Obama is doing uh, Mark Marin, uh, I think mm-hmm. that, yeah. you know, the rest of the mayors want to be cool, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, but, but you, I think, you know, I think Peduto has kind of been that mindset for a lot. I mean, when I was at the post Gazette and covering ride mm-hmm. sharing and Lyft and Uber, you know, I called up his spokesman. I was like, Hey, I want to take the mayor on a ride share, you know, let's get him in the, <laughs> in the car. Let's drive around. And I thought there's no way. Love and it. we ended up doing it. I and mean, we ended up taking a ride in the lift. And, you know, we went, he had to get toothpaste. We went shopping, you know. So it's awesome. This sort of mundane errand with the mayor talking about ride sharing and, you know, in the car with the mustache. <laughs> on the so, you know, I don't know a lot of other mayors that would do that. You know, maybe they, you know, they want to get some publicity around Lyft or Uber or whatever. But, uh, you know, it was seemed like the most natural thing in the world to him. It was like no oh, yeah. big deal. So. Oh yeah, I, I, I think I think regardless of, of Obama Obama Marin thing, he he's been doing this. He's been doing this since he was yeah. city councilman. You know, he he mm-hmm. was working with. He would show up the pod camp. I mean, I remember yeah. early early pod camp I went to, and the mayor was councilman at the time was the keynote mm-hmm. speaker. So mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, it's not a new thing. It's not like this new sort of coat that he's trying no. on. This is something that he's worn pretty well for a while. If I'm not mistaken, I think there's a project where he was working with you know I Justine before anybody knew who she was. You know, and, yeah. I, and, and, and yeah. Justin Kanaki, you know, doing some interesting yeah. things around the neighborhoods and everything. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, he he was ahead of the curve before everybody knew what the curve was, uh, sure. as far as that sure. kind of thing. So I, I think um, it, it it also you know uh, you know I, I you know for me you know p- politics wise I kind of have a deaf ear until it's something like technology. We're like oh I know what we're talking about. I can I can get involved in this right. Like that's the part I can contribute to the conversation. Yeah. And yeah. he's a guy that's been in the conversation for a while. So that's yeah. what I'm looking at. So I don't even know the rest of the stuff that people are maybe unhappy with. <laughs> yeah. So this is exciting. A, he's, it's kind of like that entry point then, right? That, yeah, exactly. That, you know, maybe you don't pay attention to every single thing he says or every single, single initiative the city's working on. But, you know, he's talking about tech now and, you know, you stick around for a little more of that conversation. Mm-hmm. He's talking about something mm-hmm. else and property taxes. And, or or, you know, or snowplow trackers and, and, and you sure. know, whatever the case may be. You know, I'm loving all the tech that they're rolling out and, and yeah. this kind of data-driven city uh, discussion that's happening. You know, one of the yeah. tech centers that start up, uh, one of the startup weekends, I think it was a civic one that was attending. Yeah. Um, great stuff that they're working on, uh, this whole data driven side, and maybe even could be doing it better in San Francisco of all places. Uh, from yeah, the yeah. I think that'd be great. Well, I think, 
what's nice too about it is, is sort of the sense of transparency. I mean, I think he's he's working. It's he's inheriting an awful lot of outdated, antiquated you know ways of doing oh, yeah. things and, oh, yeah. and everything, right? So um, you know, everything's going to happen overnight. But I think he's working hard with what the people that he has, and I think getting smart people involved and trying to make things more transparent so people are more part of the process. Um, you know, what they're doing with open data, what they're doing with, um, you know, making more things available on the city website, you know. So these are kind of things that other cities have been doing for a while, but it, it maybe didn't occur to Pittsburgh before, or just no one sort of had the, the um, presence of mind or the sort of force of will to get it done. Uh, so having availability, having transparency like that, that's really huge, especially for journalists who are trying to get information and not talk to 15 spokespeople, you know, before you can get that one piece of info that you need. So, you know, I think he deserves kudos for that as well, definitely. Mm -hmm. So it seems like we're, uh, you know, as, as there's a lot of questionable uh, things going on in the world of journalism and everything. It seems like a golden age as far as information right now. Yeah, right? it is. It definitely is a lot more players in the field and a lot more people who aren't sure what their role is going to be in the future. You know, mm -hmm. I think um, it's, it's a scary time for a lot of journalists. I think it, it can be, um, you know, a little overwhelming. How many social platforms do I have to be on before, you know, I can, everyone has my story link, you know, do I have to put it on <laughs> Facebook and Twitter and, you know, Instagram and what peach now I have to do every, every platform. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on peach. I don't know if you saw my peach rant today. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I'm like, can we not jump on the bandwagon right away on everything guys? Can we give it a second? Let the teenagers look at it first. Right, right, right. Then maybe I'll get on board. But it's like, you know, there's so many platforms that I think, you know, when, when I, people ask me who, who are trying to get on social media and get more active and more digitally oriented, you know, and they ask, well, what should I do? How do I get on all, all these platforms? I say, don't. Pick one right, or pick two. Right. You know, get really active on Twitter. Get really active on Instagram. And then maybe try some of the others. But don't do it if you're not going to really do it. You know, don't don't try and do it halfway. Right. So I think it's, it can be overwhelming. You have to use, you have this sense that you have to be everywhere at all times. And you can't possibly. Don't don't be afraid to shed one. I'm, I'm shedding ones left and right these days right. because i'm like no right. we don't need to be here this conversation is happening here so you know pay attention to that also i mean and it's okay to experiment you know it's okay yeah. i can't i gotta watch how i say these things to poke at peach okay um you know or, or something like that to say is this something and for me in two seconds i'm like i you know this this is for the teenagers i i you know uh, at least right. I, at least I know where it's starting. So like when I read that article a month from now that it's like the biggest damn thing that's coming up, right. I'm like, oh, I know what Peach is. I need You're to go read down. I have right. an account. I reserved my name. Reserve your name. Right, right. If anything right. else. Reserve your name. <laughs> At the very least. Reserve your name. But then, you know, you can't possibly do all those things well and still no. do your job. No, journalism. absolutely You not. can't do every single thing. And I sort of envy people who have mastered, you know, Snapchat, who have, really have a strong following Instagram. I kind of slog a little bit when it comes to the photo related apps. I'm just not more of a, of a word person, which is why Twitter is kind of a stronger fit for me. So don't, don't force it. I think people will know when you're forcing it sort of the advice that I give, that you're going to try and be a socially social media conscious journalist. People will see through you if you're being phony, if you're not, if you're not in your elements, you know, it's genuine. Yeah. It, it, it's pretty much genuine or bust. No matter if you're a journalist or, or whatever, a content maker or whatever the case may be right. um, content provider producer or whatever yeah yeah i mean there's there, there's many titles and hats um <laughs> but they all mean you tweet things in the end i guess <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome uh so hey anything coming up next pittsburgh or anything else you're working on you want to uh talk about uh, anything anything cool i mean we're, we're uh, you know Feeny's weenies of course was one thing yeah. uh that, that i know we talked about last week um yeah. what, what what's in the future well, right now I'm working on a piece about this big diversity survey that uh, came out this morning, um, looking at how diverse or not diverse Pittsburgh is and kind of the perceptions of, you know, white Pittsburghers versus African-American Pittsburghers, Latino Pittsburghers. You know, are we a welcoming city? We're friendly, but are we welcoming? Do we do enough for minorities in the workplace? So that's a piece I'm hoping to push out tonight, tomorrow. I know everyone else is sort of looking at it too, but really hoping to talk to some people of color, talk to some, you know, people who are in that space a little bit more about what does this mean? What can we do? Mm -hmm. um, those are the kinds of stories that I really love doing. We're actually going to have our big staff meeting tomorrow and talk about story ideas for the upcoming weeks. And we're meeting over at Alloy 26 over on the north side, the new um, incubator space that Mike Wojciech is, is a part of. So 
checking that out. I'm trying to convince him that we need to have some co-working space there. So we'll see how that goes. But um, just trying to stay, you know, one step ahead on a lot of this stuff. You know, mm-hmm. there's only so many hours in the day and so many stories you can cover <laughs> in, in a week. Um, but I think the more we can, I can get to startup events and get to, we just talk to people that are doing cool stuff. Even if I don't do a story right now, it's, you know, I can call this guy in two weeks when I, when I need to talk to someone. I can, you know, call this woman who started this thing that, you know, maybe wasn't quite ready when she hatched it, but now it's a full blown company. So it's just trying to get, you know, push myself to get to more events that mm-hmm. I wouldn't otherwise go to. You know, next week I'm going to go to the, uh, the first, um, third Thursdays event over at the Carnegie Museum of Art. Um, cause, um, Boom Concept is doing a whole, you know, takeover evening. So, you know, that's not necessarily an event I would, I would go to, um, you know, upstate, you, like you said, sort of stay in your cocoon and in your own little, little you know, group of friends and group of, you know, places that you know. But I'm trying to really sort of in 2016 push myself to go to events that, you know, I should be, you know, interacting with people that I don't know. Because right. how are you going to meet the next, you know, the next Bill Gates or the next Steve Jobs if you don't show up at his, at his startup event? You know? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, um, uh, as much as you want to tell, like, how how is the transition going from, uh, you know, big newspaper you know, kind of thing, you know, uh, yeah. in Pittsburgh to, to, um, I mean, what, what is this technically like a digital magazine, I guess we can call yeah, this. So it's, yeah. It's online only. So, well, the biggest transition has been not being in a nine to five office environment, you know, mm-hmm. that I work from home. Um, For- everything's online. I don't have those print deadlines. I mean, you do have restraints, you do have right. deadlines, right. uh, to meet, you know, you know, when stories are going to perform online and when they're not, you know, if I don't have a story, up by five o'clock probably i want to hold it till the next morning because that's when our traffic is strongest right mm-hmm. so um but it has been a little bit of a transition um i'm wearing a lot more hats you know kind of involved in more things not it's not just focused on on you know the one beat or the one area of expertise so that's been a good thing it's a lot more entrepreneurial um and you know tracy the publisher she knows what works for her audience and what doesn't and she is not afraid to tell you uh you know that story is just not a good fit that's not our kind of story um, and it's sort of freeing in a way because you don't have to cover every single thing. You know, there's no way with the small staff that we have that we could do the level of coverage like a Post Gazette does or right. like a, a Chibri does, right? Uh, but we don't have to because they're doing a good job. There's there's room for other players, I think, is kind of my, my philosophy. And, you know, I think if we can cover those stories that they're not getting to or they wouldn't necessarily cover, um, that's where our kind of piece of the, of the puzzle fits into the sort of grander landscape. But... It has been definitely a, a transition. It's been definitely a change. And, you know, I think it's tough times in newspapers right now. It's, it's not easy for, for every, anybody. And I think I'm really rooting for both the Trib and the PG to, to sort of weather the storm because I think we're lucky in Pittsburgh to have two strong newspapers um, that, you know, compete with each other and, and I think are the better for it. You know, that you get, get more in-depth coverage from, from having two papers, I think. And there's, there's enough players sort of nipping at their heels. I think that keeps them motivated too. So, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for them. I, I hope that they figure uh, out sort of the, what are the storm and, and get the business models a little bit more adapted to the 21st century. Cause I think they're on the way, but it's hard. It's, it's tough to sort of shift culture like that. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I have seen you, um, um, you know, different presentations. We've, we've shot a couple uh pod camp things and, and seen you at pod camp on panels and, and talk, talking with mm-hmm. you over the years. Um, you have a new level of excitement. Um, that that I'm really sure. digging and, and energy when I talk to you about the next Pittsburgh stuff over the last couple of weeks, and uh, yeah. it's really awesome to see a change does everybody good. I think at certain points in their careers, and, and it looks like you're you're kind of in that spot right now, and it's really cool. I think to so. Watch I think so. Happen. I'd like to continue it. Yeah. So even your tweets, even your tweets, <laughs> I'm yeah. fun with. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it. Well, it's, it was sort of like jumping off a cliff in a way. You know that I was in this very sort of safe, structured you know, uh, traditional, uh, work environment and just felt like I needed to kick myself in the butt a little bit and, and, and push forward with something new. And it just worked out, you know, Tracy was sort of looking for, to bring someone else on and it was a matter of good timing and so far so good, you know, so far. Um, yeah, it's exciting to do something a little scary, but in a good way, I think you need to scare yourself on storm in your career. And, and I should I should mention uh, listeners of this podcast, uh, Leah Leah uh, Lizarondo. We talked to uh, uh, probably about two months ago, I think, uh, for yeah. Food Rescue uh, Four One Two. Part of the staff here has some great articles on there as well. Uh, very yeah. involved in this. Um, she's so, a force of nature. That one, man. She just I don't know when she sleeps. So much <laughs> energy everywhere. 
She goes every yeah. had, had a, uh, first yeah. was introduced to her. I think uh, uh, TEDx Pittsburgh or TEDx Grandview. I can't remember which name it was at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, speech and I've been following her stuff ever since. Great stuff going on. It was great to talk to her on the talk to her mm-hmm. on the show as well. Well, Kim, yeah. thank you very much, Kim Lyons. Uh, NextPittsburgh.com. Where can people find you online outside of Next Pittsburgh? Where can, where can people be tweeting with you and everything else? You can find me on Twitter at Social Kim Lee. It's supposed to be okay. It was supposed to be funny. It was supposed to be like J Lo was Kim Lai, but no one <laughs> says Kim Lai. They all say Kim Lee. So I've sort of adapted to that. Okay, so that's my embarrassing J Lo admission right there. Um, and Twitter, I actually spend way too much time there, uh, I'm afraid. So I'm trying to branch out into other social media. I'm trying to get better on Instagram and Snapchat. If you look up that username, probably that's what I'm using on most platforms. So, you know, I'm social as much as I can be. And, and you know, uh, nextpittsburgh.com, you can find me there too. And, you know, I'm around. If people have ideas for stories or things they think we should be doing or we're not doing, you know, I definitely do want to hear from them because I think I'm all about trying to push things forward and keep improving you know, look for what's next. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining. Go check her out. And please check out all the rest of the interviews we've done over at awesomecast.net, a great collection of people that we've talked to over this last year. And uh, we're looking to get a whole bunch more here in 2016. Again, please let us know. Anybody, uh, what do you think of this interview? Uh, things that we talked about on the show, your opinions of the mayor of Pittsburgh, um, or whatever the case may be. Uh, or let us know anybody you think we should be talking to on this show or be talking about over on the main Awesome Cast show. Uh, so go subscribe and all that kind of stuff at awesome cast on the Twitters, the Facebooks and everywhere else. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you to our awesome guest, Kim Lyons. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron media podcast network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.